station of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are LA. Freeway series continues from downtown Los Angeles. The Angels took game one last night tonight from Dodgers Stadium. It is game number two between your Angels and the Los Angeles Dodgers. We welcome you inside Dodger Stadium and back to Angels baseball here on Fox Sports West along with Mark Gubiza. I'm Victor Rojas. And uh, last night we got a chance to see Andrew Heaney perform on this mound. He threw the ball exceptionally well. Tonight we get a chance to see uh, the last year's All-Star, and that's the left-hander Hector Santiago, and he's had a pretty good spring. Yeah, Victor, he's throwing the ball very well. He's used his slider quite a bit. Last year, career high as far as wins, innings pitch, strikeouts, but in spring training so far, he's really worked as far as keeping the ball down in the strike zone, see if you have quicker outs instead of throwing a lot of pitches in that five or six inning stint, which has really plagued him throughout his career. Slider's been down in the strike zone, fastball still getting his swing and misses with that changeup, occasional screwball, but above all, he's getting a lot more quick outs as far as the ground ball can still get that punch out especially when he throws that high fastball up in the zone get a swing and miss so he's been throwing the ball very well looking forward to what he does here tonight it sounded like last time we talked to him during the game that confidence is there for him and we've seen that so far uh throughout spring training we'll hopefully see it uh, today and as well as going into the 2016 season we're going to step away for a moment when we return we're going to focus in on the angels newest shortstop angelton simmons and what he brings to the table Angeles Dodgers. The Angels have a new shortstop, and I know it's difficult for Angel fans to see Eric Ibar wearing an Atlanta Braves uniform, but in Anderson Simmons, they certainly have a very special player. Uh, there's no question about it. What he's done with the bat so far in spring training, he's really watched and worked a lot with Albert Pujols, 
and Mike Trout as far as using the entire field. He's been able to hit the ball well the other way. A guy in the past when he was with the Braves, more of a pole hitter. Doesn't strike out a lot, puts the ball in play, which is good for Mike Socha. Put some contact plays on him, but he's hit the ball exceptionally well. 352 batting average with three doubles, but it's the glove that's so exciting to be able to see that range he has in that shortstop position. He is going to be a lot of fun to watch on the left side of the infield. We're just about ready for baseball here at Dodger Stadium. Sit back and relax. Going to bring you the lineups to the first pitch when we return. to you by Hyundai. Great deals on amazing cars are going on now at your Hyundai dealer. Visit buyhyundai.com today. Buy Jack in the Box. Taste the all-new Double Jack Burger today, only at Jack in the Box. And buy the Jeep Renegade. Find your inner Renegade and reach your highest potential with an EPA estimated 31 highway miles per gallon. Another beautiful night for baseball here in the Southland. The Angels and the Dodgers tangling in game two of the Freeway Series. Halos taking game one last night. Two run in the final terrific pitching last night by the Angels. Overall, I mean, uh, just from the get-go, Javi Garrett had a little bit of a hiccup there in the ninth inning. But other than that, Andrew Heaney did a terrific job, as did Al Albuquerque, Corey Rasmus, and uh, so on. So uh, we'll see if they can continue that and kind of continue that momentum going into the uh, opening day start against the Cubs. Yeah, Mike Sosha certainly was happy with the pitching and the defense last night. Dodgers have taken the field. We'll take a look at Mike Sosha's starting lineup for tonight. Again, Mike Trout not in the lineup. Yunel Escobar, however, will lead things off and play third base. G-Man Choi is in left field. Albert Pools getting to start at first base. Cole Calhoun in right. C.J. Crone is the D.H. Anderson Simmons a shortstop. Giovanni Soto gets a start tonight behind the plate. Rafael Ortega gets a start in center field. And Johnny Giovatello is back at second base, and he will bat ninth. They are taking on the right-hander, 27-year-old native from Osaka, Japan, an international signing this offseason by the Los Angeles Dodgers, and his name is Kenta Maeda. Yeah, Maeda, 15-game winner last season. Fastball, pretty good fastball. Two-seam, four-seam fastball, 89-94. Also threw a cut fastball, slider plus slider. He's got a very good slider, curveball, and changeup. Very good command, throws a lot of strikes. So look for the hitters for the Eagles to be really aggressive against him here early. 
quickly check out the defense for the Dodgers before we get back into talking about uh, Maeda a little bit. Crawford, Peterson, the league in the outfield from left to right. You've got Turner and Seeger on the left side. Hernandez and Gonzalez on the right side for the Dodgers. A.J. Ellis, the veteran behind the dish. And Adrian Gonzalez, such a good fielding first baseman, has been throughout his entire career. Four-time Gold Glove winner at first base. Back at 2-14, the last time he has won that. Still good range, good throwing arm from that first base position. Dodgers, of course, with their first-year skipper, Dave Roberts, and a uh, longtime baseball man, former starting center fielder for the Dodgers uh, between 02 and 04. As a matter of fact, 04 was the uh, the year of the famous slide. It's because the Dodgers traded him to the Boston Red Sox. And uh, who would have thunk it that he would have had such a huge impact for the uh, Boston Red Sox, first team to come back from a 3 nothing deficit against the Yankees. For a team that didn't really believe in the stolen base. Yep. How a stolen base was the reason why they came back. Yunel Escobar at the plate. Last time ended up going one for three with a base hit. 314 the season to go with the Washington Nationals. Maeda's first pitch is down low. A lot of times when you see uh, signings, international signings like uh, Maeda, you talk about uh, big contracts and uh, big upside. You Darvish comes to mind, of course, and Dale Nomo, former Dodger. But in Maeda, it's kind of a uh, tempered expectations, if you will. He's not a necessarily considered a front end of the rotation guy, more of a middle part of the rotation. And the contract that he signed is somewhat palatable one, considering uh, there was some risk involved, a little balky elbow after so many years of pitching for Hiroshima. Well, they were hoping that nobody has really seen him either. You always have that advantage as a pitcher when nobody really has a book on you for a while. Not an overpowering guy. As Escobar takes a strike, and it's two balls and a strike. Folks still settling into the seats here at Dodger Stadium. This one's out toward right center field. Peterson was shading him that way. One down. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch es Escobar leading off the season for the Angels. He does such a good job of squaring up baseballs. 281 career hitter, hit over 300 last year for the Nationals. He's got occasional power, but always it's the ball on the line. Over the years, we've seen that uh, go back four or five years. The progression of the lineup, the evolution of the lineup, if you will, from Mike Trout leading things off and then dropping them down slowly but surely. Settling in the three spot as Troy fouls one off to the left. G Man Choi getting to start in left field. He finished there yesterday. Been a nice play out there. That was to end the eighth inning on the ball that uh, Diaz hit down the line. It was an important play for him, too. He had a couple tough plays in left field towards the end of spring training in Tempe. A nice play, showing some pretty good range. Going to cover that ball by the wall, reaching over, making a nice play to finish off an inning. 24 years of age, the Angels selecting him in the Rule 5 draft from the Orioles. They signed him earlier in the offseason to a minor league deal. Previously with the Seattle Mariners, last year just limited. To 23 games and a broken leg in March. But, uh, they like his bat. The Mariners certainly like their bat. At least in the minor leagues, anyways. It just uh, changes you. GMs and the like. The uh, mentality shifts as, as far as evaluating players as choice put out for the second out. I hate it. Made a nice play on that one. Got off the mound quickly on that one. So quick, it, Gonzalez barely was getting back to the base when he threw that throw over to first base. He jammed him on a fastball after a number of all-speed pitches to Choi. I hate is definitely going to be a guy that will throw a lot of all-speed pitches, but does occasionally will bust that fastball inside. Saw a lot of off-speed pitches from Scott Kazmir last night. He got the start against the Angels. Albert DH last night at first base tonight. Takes outside. Albert had a one for three game. It's going to be his 16th season. Oh. 
bounces this one toward third. Justin Turner has it. Ada with a one, two, three, top of the first, one to the bottom of the first. Hector Santiago on the mound for the Angels. First lineup for the Los Angeles Dodgers tonight in game two of this freeway series. Kike Hernandez, Hernandez leading things off in second. Yasiel Puig in right. Hernandez. Justin Turner at third base. Adrian Gonzalez, a cleanup hitter at first. Carl Crawford scheduled to get the uh, bulk of the playing time in left field with the ethier injury. Will bat fifth. A.J. Ellis behind the plate. Jock Peterson in center. Corey Seager, the shortstop, and Maeda, the pitcher, who bat ninth as they take on Hector Santiago, the 28 year old all star a season ago. As he delivers a strike. 99 last year with a 3.59 ERA. 180 and two thirds innings pitch, career high, career high strikeouts. This one pulled to third. Escobar has it. And there's the first out. And some ground ball action for Hector Santiago, which is important for him. That's what he's shooting for. Yep. Keep that ball down the ground. Here's the Angels 66. defensively. Choi Ortega Calhoun. From left to right in the outfield, Escobar, Simmons, Giovatel, and Pools. Third to first, Giovanni Soto behind the plate. And speaking of ground balls that you want hit at somebody, Simmons for sure, twice. He's won a gold glove in a short position in the National League. Platinum glove winner, 2013 best in the National League at any position. Just a special fielder. Quig tardy on the fastball at 93. Last night, a one for four game with an RBI. Hector delivering the strike. Good. You all recall, Hector's one of those guys that doesn't waste a whole lot of time on the mound. Down low. And at times when things kind of are not going his way, that's to his detriment. Yeah, he really needs it kind of. Yeah, just take a step off that pitching rubber, take a deep breath to get back in the form. Bouncer foul. So far, some pretty good pitches in the lower part of the strike zone. He gets some strikeouts when he goes upstairs with his fastball. We've seen already 93. His fastball is generally going to be about 89 to 94. The 94 mile an hour fastball, always that one around belt high to letter high. Another one, two, and Puig takes that one up and away. It's a count of two balls and two strikes. Hector made the All Star team last year. In a fantastic first half of the season. Six and four mark and a 2 3 3 ERA. Opponents at just 2 13 against him. Second half, a little different story for Santiago. 
three and five with a 5.47 earned run average. And the number that stands out really that uh, you really would definitely want to work on this year's 29 home runs allowed. Down low. That pitch before against Creed, that high fastball. That's the pitch, even though he can get a strikeout with that pitch. If it's down a little bit low, like it was, that's what the ball gets hit out of the ballpark. That high four seam fastball over the middle of the plate. 3 2 now. This one's ripped past Simmons in the left. Well, Santiago gets ahead at 0 2. And Puig gets the uh, base hit on that 3 2 count. And the Hyundai key for this game is successful. Taylor Swift, a little blank space. Turner. Obviously, you want to put the zeros as far as runs allowed, but for me, looking at Hector, zero walks and keeping the ball in the ballpark. And also, when you get ahead of the count like he did, 0 2, finish off a hitter. Don't let him back in the count like he did against Puig. Good at bat for Puig, ended up 3 2 count, gets a base hit. I'm going to be in a nine pitch at bat, an opportunity to get through that at bat in three, maybe four pitches. Dodger third baseman Justin Turner looks at the strike. Two ninety four a season ago. Sixteen home runs, sixty driven home. Won the two game last night with a single and a walk. Off speed on the inside corner, 0 2. It's always fun to see Puig and Albert Pujols over together there. First base, remember, it was it last year or the year before when Albert? Tagged up on him in a fly ball, short fly ball, and then he outfield. He had a little laugh after the game, and the next day. I think that was a couple of years ago, because he was he was in center, center field. Yeah. Yes, I was here in this ballpark. Turner pulls him to third. Escobar has it. The Giovatella on the pool holes in an ending double play. One complete here at Dodger Stadium. And we are scoreless. Two ball to finish off the first inning scoreless as we begin the second. Hey, I want to remind you, you can become a season seat holder. You can do that by uh, logging on to angels.com slash season seats. You can enjoy exclusive benefits and same seats all season long at the greatest value. That's angels.com slash season seats. Halos will return home. Manana, 6.05 start against the Dodgers, and they've got a Sunday affair. Spring training contest. You see the Chicago Cubs. That is the honest schedule. Especially considering it's a team you're opening up with. And opening day. 
definitely different. Definitely. This one down the line, hooking. And we go foul. I remember one year in Kansas City, we were down there in Baseball City slash Haines City in Florida. We had a game on a Sunday. They decided to schedule that game. Played there, finished that game up, and then had to fly across the country to open up the season in a day game against the Oakland A's the next day. That didn't uh, that didn't work out real well. Yeah, it was opening day. What's there? Four games, five games, whatever on opening day yeah. Sunday. I'm sure the Mets aren't feeling real good about opening up in Kansas City where they raised the World Series flag the first day, and then the next day they had the ring ceremony. So two days of fun for the Mets in Kansas City. They should have won. <laughs> they wouldn't feel so bad. Yeah. Good point. Handles here in the second of Calhoun, Crone, and Simmons. Way to retire the side in order to first in. Colo for two. Last night with a walk and a run scored. Off speed stuff continues for Maeda. One of the goals going into the winter in the offseason for Cole Calhoun was cutting back on strikeouts. Behind in the count, dealing with some off speed pitches here also. Foul down. A little battle here. You can watch all the video you want, especially from the Hitter standpoint about pitchers, but until you actually get in the box and see the release point, the, you know, the delivery, and that hesitation yep. as you try to stay back as a hitter. When you look at Cole, the way he prepares for the pitch, he has that toe tap and then he does it again before he has the back go through the zone. It's all about timing for him right now. One, two. Gets it. Back to the off speed pitch, and there's down number one. First strikeout for Maeda. Pretty good off speed pitch here. You got the foot down, Cole, but then she's still trying to stay back on the changeup. A real good changeup. It's a swing and miss on it. Hundred seventy five punch outs for uh, Maeda last year in Japan. At least he's uh, fairly quick and throws strikes. Daisuke Matsuzaka for the Boston Red Sox. He would never give in. You want to talk about four hour games. This was backhanded by Turner. And it started from the get go. From inning number one, he was. Nibbling on the corners, and he had good stuff. Real, he had good seven stuff, pitches. He could be three zero, and he would still not throw a fastball three zero. And if it's three one, he throw another off speed pitch again. Then a little pitch off the outside corner would never give in. He had the uh, infamous gyro ball that he uh, was going to import. Left it on the shelf. <laughs> C.J. Wilson uh, learned the gyro ball, by the way, to throw it. So he said, anyways, while well, he was a member of the Texas Rangers. Speaking of C.J. Wilson, said he should be throwing tomorrow. His throwing program, shoulder feeling stronger. One ball, one strike on Anderson Simmons. C.J. of course, uh, his season cut short last year. With the surgery on the elbow. And with the shoulder issue this spring. Tyler Skaggs going to throw tomorrow. Yes. Three innings tomorrow. Looking forward to seeing him throw. 
wants him to simulate a game his first time back on the mound a couple weeks ago in Tampa. He just looks so comfortable. Then his outing he had in a spring training game. I thought it was going to be against minor league guys. Ended up being in a big league game. Threw the ball exceptionally well. It's a White Sox. Threw the ball very well. Toward the middle and Kiko Hernandez moves to his right. Down. The Angels are down in order once again. Six up and six down for Kenta Maeda. One to the bottom of the second. No score. Tie one here early on. Angel fans uh, throughout this ballpark will see the uh, lovely color of red tomorrow at the Big A, and there will be Dodger fans in attendance at the Big A as well. Fifty years, the Big A. It's pretty amazing, crazy. Adrian Gonzalez, Carl Crawford, A.J. Ellis. Gonzalez, kind of uh, so maybe think about slapping one past Escobar. Shift is on, but third baseman settled in between the shortstop and third base position. One ball, one strike. Shabashaniago to induce a double play ball off the bat of Justin Turner to get out of the first inning. Three outs via the ground ball in the first inning. Two outs with that ground ball to Escobar. Also started off the inning the ground ball to Escobar. Talked about him last night when we were interviewing him during the game. This one to the left. Lead off single for Adrian Gonzalez. Gonzalez can flat out hit. Use the entire ballpark. He's going to travel deeper in the strike zone. He still will hit that ball hard to left field, to left center field. It's always been a difficult out. You always think you can pitch him fastballs in, but that's when he turns on. He can pull it out of the ballpark down the right field line. Albert will play behind Gonzalez at first base. Carl Crawford, the left fielder, up. Andre Ethier. It's a miss between them. It all depends on how the leg heals and the rehab and everything. 10 to 14 weeks. Broken tibia. Yeah. Been there. That's not an easy thing to come back from quicker than that time frame. Good ball, one strike. 
Crawford gets the uh, bulk of the playing duties in the outfield. 34 year old native of Houston, Texas. Missed some time last year with the right oblique strain. 265 with four home runs, 16 runs batted. In. Factor behind, two balls in the trunk. Gonna try to get another one of those ground balls and an infielder. This one to the left side. They get the lead runner, Gonzalez, but that's it. He's on the transfer for Escobar. Catcher number 17, AJ. Always going to be a difficult turn against Crawford going down the line, anyhow. A little bit of a bobble just taking that shore out at second base. Here's A.J. Ellis, the catcher. Back-to-back -back starts for him. Oh, for four last night as he pulls this one foul. See, generally the guy will always take that first pitch, but see him lately, though, be more aggressive thinking, okay, the pitcher's just going to try to groove that first pitch right over for me. I'm going to be attacking that. Out front slightly, but hit it well. At what point as a pitcher do you change your game plan if you see guys hacking early in the count? Well, then, then all of a sudden you start changing it up as far as you, you'll mix in an off-speed pitch. Like when you faced, when I faced like Wade Boggs back then, you knew he was always taking that first pitch. You got to the point where he, I knew he wasn't going to try to set me up. He was always comfortable with two strikes. I wouldn't waste anything. I would throw a four-seam fastball, which I didn't throw a lot of, middle part of the plate, and then went from there. Ricky Henderson was really good at that, but he would set you up some games. Where generally he's always a guy that would take that first pitch fastball. He also is waiting for that one time where you just groove that first pitch fastball and he can hit it out of the ballpark. Certainly the best of all time as far as leadoff home runs in a game. But did you adjust based on the fact that they were swinging early or did you take into account, I guess, the result? I mean, if there were hard hit balls, you're obviously going to change things, but if they're not hard hit balls yet, they're still swinging early. You can stay with the yeah. game plan. Yeah, Minnesota twin. The Minnesota Twins, even now, still do that. But they, you know, they were always and have been, and for as long as I can remember, a very aggressive first pitch swinging club. So I would throw a fastball almost every time, but I would throw a fastball, maybe a half the baseball Peterson. off the outside corner to see if they would try to pull it. Now, if I stay back and start going the other way, I change up a little bit, but I always figured, you know what? Is it, your goal as a pitcher is to have some kind of effect of that at bat within two or three pitches if you can. That way you get it out quickly, saves that good fastball or that slider you might need for a strikeout later in the game, but get those quick outs, even if they're hit hard, doesn't matter because the next guy could do the same thing, hit a ground ball on an infielder, and you get two outs anyhow from it. Two outs of the man on, and Jock Peterson, the center fielder up. See the shift. It's Escobar, the third baseman, out in shallow right field. Seven stays at home on the left side. And that's a surprise when you look for the shift, when you got a left-handed pitcher on the mound against a left-handed batter. We've seen that off with a right-handed pitcher, right-handed batter. You, you wouldn't think, especially with a lefty at the plate against Hector, that you would have the shift on, but all the numbers say that he will still try to pull the ball on the ground. You know, we talked about Anderton Simmons and what he brings to the table defensively. I mean, you go back to the last couple of years with David Freeze on the left side of the infield. He would never shift over to the second base side, so it was David that was stuck on the left side of the infield. You talk about considerable amount of range now picked up by the Angels with having just Simmons stay there, patrol that left side with Escobar moving out to shallow right. Now, you can still make a pretty good pitch on the outer half and just feel comfortable that Simmons is going to have that area covered anyhow with his range he has. Or at the very least, we'll certainly have a much better opportunity of making that play than uh, what the Angels have had in years past. Well, Angel fans are really going to love watching Simmons play that shortstop position. I know 
We're huge fans. We always have been of Eric Ibar and what he has done and meant for the club. But Simmons is so special in that position. Two balls and a strike on Jack Peterson, the center fielder. 23 year old. Last year, 210 with 26 home runs. Drove in 54. Really tailed off in the second half. 230 in the first half. 178 in the second half. Racked up a lot of strikeouts with 170. Incredible power. I so remember it was three years ago in spring training yeah. here. He's got wow. amazing power. A very good outfielder also. Scoreless in the second. Carl Crawford, the base runner at first, two down. Crawford takes off. Peterson takes a strike to throw down to the second. Is in time. They got him. And it looks like the way Giovatella is hobbling off is that his foot was in front of the bag and Crawford got him and that's why he was called out at second. Crawford's pointing into Dave Roberts maybe to check this play. Right on the belt the foot right on the foot. Yeah You're, he never really got to the base. Well, what a throw by Soto I thought he had no chance. It's good angle right there the foot. The cleat on. Gia Vitell's foot. That angle there looked like maybe the heel got there, but uh, no argument from Dave Roberts and the Dodgers. That is the third out. Two in the books here at Dodger Stadium. We're still scoreless. Going out to end the bottom of the second inning and uh, go back and take a look at the replay. It looks like maybe the foot came off. Yeah, at the last second is Gia Patel is keeping that tag. You see the foot is off the base at that point. Great job as well. Look right there and he calls him out because he came off the base. See, as soon as that, you have to stay connected with the base all the way through. And Carl Crawford saying, well, that was because of his foot. Well, that's part of the game. Yeah. Your foot is there. You have to find a way to either get through it or around the foot. Of the defender. This one pulled to left field off the end of the bat and will fall in for a base hit. So Soto throws out Crawford. Soto leads things off with a base hit to Crawford. Another one of those good moves, Victor, I think that Billy Epler did during the offseason. Well, last year, Soto threw out a little over 30% of would be base. So it was a great throw. We just saw that last inning, but also has some pretty good power. 
And with a base hit, former rookie of the year with the yeah, Chicago Ortega. Cubs. And all of a sudden, you have two very good defensive catchers that both can hit well. Maida will work from the stretch for the first time. He'd retire the first six to start the game. It's Rafael Ortega, the center fielder up. He bounces one through the right side. As he went swinging at that first pitch. Soto will stop at second base. And the Angels have two on with nobody out. Interesting early in the game here to see what well. the Angels do with Gia Vitello. First and second, no outs. He has to square around the bunt. Or Mike So should give him a chance to swing at least one pitch in this at bat. National League rules, number nine hitter, pitcher, squaring around the bunt. Johnny Giovatella, a solid hitter, maybe given the opportunity to swing at least the first pitch of this sequence. Oh, it's Tony La Russa. The pitcher's batting in the eighth spot. Yep. Joe Madden yep. does the same thing for Chicago, the Cubbies. Johnny last night ended up going 0 for 4, went the distance, playing all nine innings. Here's Ron Renicki back with the Angels at third base. Pulled on the breaking pitch and he offered at it, so it's one ball, one strike. And you see, each team has about two or three plays they put on in a first and second bunt situation where you have the first baseman, in this case, Adrian Gonzalez, crashing to try to get a play, a forced play at third. Turner's kind of staying towards the base, hoping either that or Mejeda be able to get off the mound and field the baseball and potentially have a force out at third. You're hoping, hoping to put the ball down the third base line, the first base crash again. Johnny prior to last year hadn't recorded a sacrifice bot in his big league career. Last year he ended up having nine with the Angels. He's got a 1 1 count. And that's what Johnny's doing right there. He's just, he's moving a lot with the bat. You want to keep that steady and make sure it's in the strike zone also. Especially a curveball, slow one like that. That's an easier one to get down if you keep that bat lower. See him kind of turning the bat. You want to keep it level. Once you do that, you're not going to be able to keep that in, in play. Keep it level. You want the pitch down in the strike zone anyhow. Much easier to bunt on the ground. The high fastball, difficult to get on the ground. Goes down, swing for out number one. Tough little slider. You know, Escobar. He did. That's his plus pitch he has. Good command with his fastball, but his slider is his go-to pitch for a swing and miss. Runners remaining at first and second, one down for Escobar. Now let off the game with a fly ball to right center. Got to believe he's going to be hacking at this first pitch here. Anywhere near the strike zone. Back up the middle. That'll sneak through for a base hit. Being waved around is Soto. Peterson's throw goes to third base. And it goes off the glove of Turner. So everyone is safe, and the Angels have a 1 nothing lead. And aggressive on that first pitch. First at bat, he was a 2-0 count before he, he got involved in a swing in the bat. Right up the middle. Escobar talked about how important he is going to be to this offense. Turned unable to get that throw in for Peterson. Looked like they had a chance at Ortega at third base. And we've seen him some aggressive base running. Good base running, too, by Escobar. Get it in the scoring position himself. Looked like that second hop. To Turner kind of jumped up on him a little bit. He just couldn't handle it. Yeah, it looked like it surprised him. Then he was looking to try to find Ortega, slide it in, and took his eye off the baseball at that point.
right side. It'll bring in a run. So G Man Choi gets the job done with the infield play back, giving the Angels a 2 0 lead. See what that aggress aggressive base running does for you. It gets a routine ground ball to second base, ends up being a run because of taking took that chance to go into third, slides in there. Ends up scoring on that ground ball out, productive out by Choi. Escobar third, two down, and Albert up. Pujols hole so for one with a ground ball to third. Remember, 499 and 500 like it was yesterday. In Washington. Back-to-back -back singles to start the third against Maeda, Soto, and Ortega. Both of those guys coming around to score. Breaking ball. This is Albert ahead of the count of two balls and no strikes. Top of the order picking up Johnny Giovatella and able to get that sacrifice down. A little slider. Also a cut fastball hole throw. Wasn't going to give in to a one of the all-time great hitters, power hitters, and Albert Pulse in a 2-0 fastball. One thing Albert will remember when the freeway series counts in May, he gets ahead of the count 0 2 or 2 0. Cole Calhoun on deck. A cool night here in Los Angeles. Very little breeze tonight. So really nice night for baseball. 3 1. Off the end of the bat, it's a fair ball. Turner has it. Goes across the diamond, and Albert retired for the third out. But the Angels strike for two runs on three hits. We'll head to the bottom of the third. Halo is leading at 2 0.
with an RBI single. G Man Joy with the RBI Easy. ground down, giving the Angels and Hector Santiago the lead as we begin this third inning. Bottom third of the order, Jock Peterson will lead things off. He was at the plate when Giovanni Soto threw out Carl Crawford to end the second. Ran that fast play on Peterson Hector did very well off the inside part of the plate. One ball, one strike. No punch outs, no walks for Hector. Two singles allowed. Just by much. No. Hector's allowed two singles, but he's only faced a minimum of six batters through two innings. Oh, apparently missing a little bit high. It's three balls and a strike. Velocity very good for Hector. Ball coming out of his hand well. This will foul back for count. Now, not that Hector Santiago needed to lose any weight by any stretch of the imagination, but he looks almost like he did lose some weight, almost like trimmed up, I guess, a little bit more so. Yeah, what he did is he concentrated more on his, you know, his physicality during the winter before he got into throwing. A little bit later as far as his throwing program. He looks in outstanding shape. Yeah. Peterson goes down swinging for the first out. And that was important for him too when you think about career high as far as innings pitched. So you get the legs strong, the upper body strong, and then you get into your throwing program. Good fastball, 93. Swing and miss for Peterson. And he said he heard his name quite a bit, thinking he was going to be traded during the offseason. Very happy to be still wearing the Angel uniform. Excited about putting up some big numbers. Looks like he's going to be pitching the third game of the season, that first one against Texas in a four-game set. O2 Cali, Corey Seager. The Cubs in town for two on Monday, Tuesday night. Off day on Wednesday for the Angels, and then a uh, four-game series against Texas. Starting Thursday, Seager takes out John. One ball, two strikes on the uh, Dodger shortstop. And he goes on the off-speed pitch, two down. That's that good slider. Take a look at that Honda upcoming schedule as we just mentioned it. Pitcher number 18. And those are times. Uh, obviously, the time that we're on the air. Sunday, 11:30, Angels Live. Yes, an hour-long pregame show for opening day. Mm -hmm. The Cubbies in that real game on Monday. What a game that is going to be. Garrett Richards will get the uh, opening day nod, his first in his big league career. Garrett with a very eventful day today after everyone's seen on the pregame show. A little prank yeah. pulled on him out in Arizona. That was great. It, it, he, uh, he had no idea either. It was funny. Kind enough to join us last night. Enjoyed the sunflower seeds also. <laughs> Showered by sunflower <laughs> seeds. Exactly. Since Houston Street was just peppered him the whole time. Aiden lifts him down the right field line and slicing toward the seats. Even to count of two balls and two strikes. Cole, as usual, 
trying to get to that baseball, even though it's about two, three rows into the stands, running hard, trying to make a play. John Giabatello, same thing. One speed, yes. Just love the way Cole Calhoun plays the game of baseball. Made a foul tips now, and Hector Santiago strikes out the side. That's a, an emphatic shutdown inning. We'll head to the fourth inning. The Angels up 2 nothing. And the Angels leading the Dodgers here two to nothing. Top of the fourth inning. And now it's time for Kia in the driver's seat brought to you by Kia. Cole Calhoun. What an outstanding season he had last year. 26 home runs. Most by an Angel right fielder since 2006. First ever right fielder to win the gold glove. Thought he might have won it the year before. He had an outstanding season in right field. Pretty excited about it. Talked to him this winter when he received that call. Outstanding honor to win a gold glove. Zerb and so for Cole Calhoun. First for an angel out to this is Torrey, 2009. The uh, since retired Torrey. Yes. Hung him up. As did LaTroy Hawkins. Yes. The former Angels. And our buddy Dan And they both Her live in Prosper, Texas. You think yes. they, uh, they called each other and said, hey, let's just let's have take it off. Take it off. Dan Heron, too. Yeah. Let's go, Dan. Dan's pretty big in the Twitter world right he now. Is. He's got some great tweets. His tweets are pretty much everyone's thought bubbles. Yeah. <laughs> A lot easier when you just take it on home. <laughs> Say what you want. Yes. Calhoun, Cronin, and Simmons for the Angels here against Maeda. Two strikeouts, no walks, three hits allowed. Now tipped into the hit. No balls, two strikes. All right, your scouting report on Maeda so far, which you've seen through three. Doesn't give in. Good fastball at times, spots it well. I've heard that his command is very good. But his slider, for me, is his bread and butter. He throws that whenever he wants to in the strike zone. Rick Hunnick got the pitching coach. Roberts, the manager. Seeger gets rid of it quickly and there's out number one. I mentioned last night, but uh, in case you weren't with us, Rick Connick got the lone holdover from the coaching staff, from Don Mattingly's the coaching staff. CJ Crow. The rest of the guys are brand new, with Dave Roberts being a first time skipper. Running Bob Guerin, formerly a skipper with the uh, Oakland Athletics, is uh, Dave's bench coach. Bench coach with the Mets last year. Yeah. It's important for any young manager to have a pitching coach you're comfortable with. And Rick Honeycutt's done a tremendous job here over the years as the Dodger pitching coach. Easy transition. I, 
you say that when you talk about the, the trust factor between the, the manager and the pitching coach. Other than maybe let's say uh, the bench coach or the third base I think those are the three primary positions in which a manager must have extreme confidence that it's their guy. But in uh, Rick Honeycutt obviously he knows the system he knows these guys and this that is the man that you're going to rely on as a manager to uh, say hey bullpen guys who's ready who can go that night you know what are you expecting what are you seeing into your starter that night is does he have anything left in the tank I mean that's what that pitching coach is for it's not so much the mechanics and it is if something's going wrong you go out there and fix it or whatever at least give uh, some notes but from bouncing things around especially in today's game as Chrome lines with a left hammer but Crawford playing deep makes the catch for the second out he was almost playing on the warning track to begin with that ball was hit very well by Chrome but getting back to that comfort zone for for a manager if, if you're comfortable with your pitching coach a lot of times you you have to make obviously as the manager you're making the decisions when to take out a pitcher whether it's a starter or a guy in the bullpen but if you have a pitching coach that you're real comfortable with say and ask him what do you think what are you seeing here does he seem to be losing a little bit of zip on his fastball his location is his legs seem to be getting a little bit heavy elevating pitches as soon as your pitching coach if you're comfortable with it says that well then you're going to make that call down to the bullpen or potentially make a pitching change before the game gets out of hand and it's not just as the game is going on it's it's two three innings in advance and that's where that bench coach communication comes in because especially in the National League with all the changes double switches You've got to be thinking that way and, and trust with that bench coach yeah. because your bench coach has to have that eye on everything else that's going on because as a manager the game is being processed in your brain right at that time. But you also got to think in terms of an inning or two later where you might need a pinch runner. You might need a defensive replacement and you might not be thinking about it. That is the manager at that point. But your bench coach does and he tells you walks by and say hey I think such and such has to be ready just in case we want to make a defensive change or we might have to do a bunt. Dean Weeble does a great job with that. His rapport with Mike Sosha, they've known each other for a long time. He's very good as far as letting them know. Sharply hit by Simmons, but right to Seeger. Maeda with a 1, 2, 3, fourth. Top of the order coming up for the Dodgers. As we hit at the bottom of the inning, the Angels up 2 nothing. By Subaru Loves Promise. Subaru's pledge is to do right by the communities in which we all live and work. And by El Pollo Loco. Try the new signature avocado tostadas today. Bottom of the fourth inning. Two nothing Angels. Hector Santiago coming off a frame in which he uh, struck out the side. Will face Kike Hernandez, Yasiel Puig, and Justin Turner. This fourth inning for the Dodgers. Kike 0 for 1 as he grounded out to Escobar. The bottom of the first. Halos with three hits, Dodgers with two. The 
Late bite on that breaking ball. Yeah, he did. Hector. Had a good curveball and slider. This one out to right field. Little hang up for Cole. One down. Get those plays made behind you when you're throwing a lot of strikes. Work quickly like Hector always does. We get a real long good at bat against Hector last time around. It was behind 0-2 and the Fighting also pitches 3 2 count before getting a single. It was a nine pitch at bat for Puig against Hector. I don't think he was looking to go single the other way on that swing. No. He has been patient in the first two games, taking a the first pitch, but not that time around. Joe Bland getting ready. His stint with the Angels didn't go all too well. 0 oh, 2. Puig takes a called strike three, two down. Look like Yasiel Puig was looking for something off speed. Fastball inside corner from Hector at 94. Okay. And I love when you see a pitcher Turner. attacking when he's ahead 0 2, not just throwing something way out of the strike zone. Paints the inside corner, call third strike. Six straight retired by Santiago. As Turner pulls this one foul. Oh, nice play. That is a heck of a play. Yes. Playing the carom nicely. Showing how he's, yeah, no problem. Oh, picking machine. <laughs> <laughs> I think he may have been talking to Andrelton Simmons. I, I was going to say the same thing as, I, I know you got a couple gold gloves, but that was. Gold Love worthy. Playing the carom. Yeah. Oh, look at that behind him. <laughs> no balls, two strikes on Turner. Grounded into an inning ending double play in the first. Played on this one. Pretty impressive for Hector so far. See that count 0 2 five times in this game. We're only in the fourth inning, and Hector's been ahead of the count 0 2. 54 pitches thrown. Now with two outs in the fourth. This one out to center. Ortega puts it away, and another 1 2 3 inning for Hector Santiago. For the box, 2 0 Angels.
foundation and celebration of this month's Every Day is Earth Day initiative. By making simple changes in our daily lives, we can make a big impact on our environment. Go to FoxSportsSupports.com to learn more about what you can do to be part of the solution. Top of the fifth, two nothing Halos. Soto, Ortega, and Giovatella coming up. They will not face Kenta Maeda. As he is done after four innings in his last spring training tune-up. And it's uh, mighty Joe Bland taking over on the mound. Joe last year started the season with Kansas City. Pushing 15 games, four starts. They got traded to the Pittsburgh Pirates. And was stellar down the stretch for the Pirates, going 5-0 and with a 1.57 ERA, pitching in 21 games. And that was all in relief. The Dodgers signed up in the offseason. The injuries that the Dodgers pitching staff has had. Kemp provides some length out of the bullpen for him. Good numbers. Mentioned that last year out of relief. This return to the American League did not go well back in 2013. The Angels signed him. Going 2 at 14 with an ERA of just over 6. We're talking about Hector Santiago's in the home run ball. 29 that Hector gave up last year in over 180 innings. Blanton gave up 29 for the Angels in 132 innings. Hence, that's why the ERA the way it was. You know. First round pick of the Oakland Athletics back in 2002. Giovanni Soto with a single and a run scores. This is with foul. Looks like that modified stretch we've seen from a lot of pitchers. Even though he's been pitching out of bullpen of late, it's still more. I even saw. Noah Syndergaard for the Mets using a similar type of delivery with no one on base. Allows you to have a little bit better balance, not a lot of wasted motion. Doesn't matter what Thor does. No. <laughs> he can just stand there and just drop the baseball in there at 97 miles an hour. And they got some pretty good arms there with the Mets. Soto pops it up. Kike Hernandez calling for it. One down. Better fielder number 39, Rafael Ortega. Rafael Ortega coming up now. Got to start tonight at center field. Angel signing him to a one year deal in the offseason. Spent last year Triple A Memphis in the Cardinals organization, put up good numbers at 286, and 17 stolen bases. He's done a real good job here in spring training. Once considered a uh, very nice prospect with the Colorado Rockies. But injuries plagued him in his minor league career. He was able to put it together last year. Not a bad guy to have, I mean, especially for. Uh, What's going to cost you? Major League minimum at worst. A good throwing arm from yeah. the outfield can run real well. You see, by the batting average, puts the ball in play very well. At a base hit his first time up. Counts this one foul. One and two. Curious to see how the uh, the rest of the the roster shakes out for the Angels prior to Monday's opener. Angels general manager Billy Apple is going to join us on Sunday. This one out toward left center field, slicing back towards Crawford, two down. Fans, the Angels opening series is Monday and Tuesday against the Cubs. Fans in attendance will receive a wall calendar courtesy of U.S. Bank while supplies last. Every game matters. So visit Angels.com to purchase your tickets today. Epler's actually agreed to come on the air with us, huh? Yes, on Sunday. Hasn't been briefed yet. I had a quick conversation Did with you? him earlier today. 
Do you go pitching coach on him? A little pat on the backside and say good luck. Go get him. Yeah. We're, we're not going to ask you too many questions about the roster. He goes, okay, we'll be all right. Sunday, I'll have some good information for you. Ball on a strike of Johnny Giovatello. Struck out in the third. Slider. Earlier today, Billy Albert was down there in the dugout with Bud Black or Chavez, all here tonight. Well, Eric could certainly play that third base position extremely well. Very good major league career. Trying to lay off that slider. Full count. Top of the order, Nunel Escobar on deck. Joe Blant wanted this pitch call to strike. Again, it's not where the catcher's catching that baseball, where it crosses the plate pretty close, borderline. Two out base hit for Johnny. Keeps the lineup moving, and Escobar will come to the plate. Now, when your catcher basically catches it and throws it right back to you, it's not a strike. You know, Escobar. It's a pretty good indicator, right? You can yeah. look in as much as you want as a exactly. pitcher. Exactly. But you also want some help from your battery mate back yeah, there he, once he, in a while. I mean, Ellis literally just caught it and just threw it right back. back. <laughs> he said, you're looking in, but now it wasn't a strike. <laughs> Otherwise, if it's a strike, I'm not looking real good the way I end up catching that ball into the dirt. <laughs> right. So it was a ball. Or maybe that's just Ellis playing my games. Yeah. I caught that poorly, yeah. and so it's not a strike. I'm throwing or it back Or I'm not going to complain about it just in case it's a borderline pitch when I'm at the plate. Escobar, one for two with an RBI single. Boy, does he like that first pitch fastball. He fell that one straight back. Bouncer toward the middle. Seeker to his left has it. Get the ball out of the glove. He's going to go the short way, but decides to go over to first base. We'll head to the bottom of the fifth. Halo still on top.
produced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Angels Baseball LP. 2-0 Angels on top, bottom of the fifth. Gonzalez, Crawford, Ellis for the Dodgers. You can take to Santiago, has four strikeouts, no walks, and two hits allowed. Gonzalez has one of those hits. It was a single to left, and that was leading off the second inning, so he's one for one. Fifty-seven pitches thrown for Hector Santiago through four. He's got around those last two sliders, it looked like. Didn't quite get that elbow up where they have that downward action on a slider more sideward break to it. Left side, Simmons to the back end. Going down. This play by Simmons, solid as far as delivering the baseball throughout the scheme for Hector. That good balance, Look at that balance over that pitching rubber. The balance, the drive towards the plate, eyes on the target, a lot of waste of motion. We've seen in the past where his front shoulder opens up so quickly, it brings that elbow down. Very difficult to be consistent in the strike zone, but we've seen a number of ground ball outs today for Hector Santiago, which is huge for him. Crawford fouls that one back, and it's an 0-1 count. Carlo for one as he reached on the fielder's choice. Throwing out, trying to steal second in the second. Another 0 2 count for Hector. Six in the game. One ball, two strikes. Giovanni Soto does a nice job behind the plate, also. He wanted that fastball high. And a more cutting action there, but he's done a nice job as far as setting a good target, framing the baseball well. Hyundai key for this game talked about Taylor Swift, a little blank space for Hector. Certainly has done that so far as the runs, but the most important thing has been for me has been the, the walk total zero. An excellent get ahead of the count six times ahead of the count 0 2 to batters tonight. Again, you see some of these swings. Guys late on the fastball. Shows you the uh, the sneakiness, and the velocity that uh, Hector Santiago possesses. He is in excellent shape. Legs look strong. Maintaining velocity. That's his 66th pitch. 65th pitch was at 94. This one is a fair ball, late on it, slaps it out to left field. Crawford will end up at second base for the double. Not a bad pitch for Hector. Crawford a little bit late going, a fastball away, hits the location. And with the shift on, a lot of room on that left side of the infield. Right down that line for a double for Carl Crawford. Not necessarily exactly what he was trying to do. He was late on the swing like you mentioned, Victor. Yeah. First time tonight, the Dodgers have had a man reach scoring position. It comes with an out here in the fifth as A.J. Ellis steps in. Ellis 
Davis hit a fly ball to right down the second. Pickoff attempt. No real play there with Crawford getting back in. Throughout the entire spring training, Johnny Giovatel has put on a lot of picks at second base, which is good because that way you've kind of decreased that secondary lead for the runner at second. Out to right. Cold back. Crawford back to the base to tag. He's going to stay right there. Always wise against Cole Calhoun. Two down. Especially you're already in scoring position. That could have been the third out of the inning. You want to stay there at second. Unless you know for sure you're going to be able to advance at third base. Number 31, John Peterson. Jock Peterson comes up with two outs and a man in scoring position. Struck out back in the third inning. She's over one. Another shift being put on. Escobar out in right center field. Simmons, that left side of the infield coverage. Still attacking the strike zone. Halos have Mike Moore getting ready their bullpen. JP Howell going for the Dodgers. One ball, one strike. Just attacking the strike zone, Hector Santiago. He's faced 17 batters in this game 14 times. He's on a first pitch strike. Somebody Charlie Nagy and Mike Sosha got to feel real good about that from Hector. There's Mike Mark, who himself is in excellent shape this year. This one out to straightaway center field, a towering shot, taking Ortega back to the wall, but that's the deepest part of this ballpark. And it is tracked down by Ortega for the third out. Five in the books, Halos maintain their 2 0 lead.
Insurance is brought to you by Mercury Insurance. On a mission to save you money, log on to mercuryinsurance.com today to get a fast free quote and see how much you can save. And by your Southern California Toyota dealers. 2 0 Halos on top. Top of the sixth inning. Nice job by Hector Santiago. Got to like this, uh, this outing for him. 73 pitches in his last spring training tune up. No walks, four punch outs. 17 batters face, 14 first pitch strikes. Six times head of the count, 0 2. Hitting for the Angels, great. Shane Robinson. Shane Robinson's going to pinch hit here for J.P. Howell. Howell last night threw two pitches. See his numbers last year. Robinson signed yesterday by the Angels and got the start in center field. Ended up going 0 for 2 with a double play ball and a strikeout. So we get the rematch of the NLCS from a couple of years ago. You're building the drama, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because why wouldn't you in spring training? Yes. Drama. 250 last year for the Minnesota Twins. It's one ball, one strike. He's batting at G-Man Choi's spot. Choi ends up going over two with an RBI. Powell will throw a fastball, 83 to 87 range. Big curveball as you see in the last two, and it's good changeup. This one pulled to short. Well down. Every moment matters. Join us April 9th at 6.05. Halo's taking on the Texas Rangers and enjoy post-game Saturday night fireworks. Show presented by Wells Fargo. Visit angels.com to purchase your tickets today. Fireworks. Nice. Albert Pujol steps in. One out, nobody on. Albert over two, twice his ground down to Turner. Third base. If I remember correctly, J.P. Howell, when he got drafted, that's a pretty good fuzz. Yes. She rushed up there low to mid-90s. He turns over his fastball. That's where it hit better. You see that? Try to turn it over to the inside part of the plate and then go back out away. First round pick of the Royals back in 2004. 31st overall selection. They traded to the uh, Tampa Bay Rays. Although I believe they were the Devil Rays back in 06. It was a Joey Gathright deal. Remember Joey Gathright? Yes. The run like the wind. Extremely fast. Three balls, one strike. Dodgers have Yimmy Garcia loosening. Not toward right. Two down. Right fielder, Cole Calhoun. looks a little frustrated after that, uh, that fly ball out to right. Yeah, pretty good pitch to drive, too. Just missed that one. Calhoun 0 for 2 with a strike out of ground out. Got 
down to shift on Cole. Two and oh. Tables with their uh, win last night. Now uh, 16, 8, and 6 in spring training. Good spring training offensively for this ball club. Pitching hasn't been all that bad either. Three and one. Good patience at the plate here against a tough lefty for Cole Calhoun. Did catch the corner. A full count now. The Dodgers shift back to two infielders on the left, two on the right. See that off with all the data available for the bench coach. Certain counts where they're going to pull or not pull on. 3 2, and uh, that hit him. Off speed pitch. A two out hit by a pitch, but a man on for the Angels. Designated hitter, CJ Crone. Turn over that fastball, get some rate on the forearm, inside part of the arm. Got a double switch coming up here with uh, Dave Roberts visiting with Alfonso Marquez, the home plate umpire. J.P. Howe is done after facing three batters here in the sixth inning. Van Slyke's going to go out to the uh, center, it appears. And Jimmy Garcia is going to come in to try to get that third out. Two nothing Angels, we're at the top of the sixth. Handles up 2-0, to top of the sixth inning. Jimmy Garcia, through two pitches last night, comes in to try to get the third and final out here in the sixth inning for the Dodgers. 59 games a season to go, 3.34 ERA. He'll face C.J. Crone, the D.H. Cole Calhoun standing at first. Crone brushed the baseball last at bat to Carl Crawford caught on the warning track. Pretty much was playing on the warning track. 
Scott Van Slyke takes over at center. Mentioned the double switch. And Slyke will bat in the number nine spot now. Oh, one count. The ball is two strikes. We just feel this is going to be that year where C.J. Crone puts it together from the beginning part of the year all the way through and puts up some big numbers. Especially the way the offense looks right now, how many guys are going to be on base in front of them. A lot of opportunities to drive in runs. Certainly has the potential, power potential to do it. Former well, first round pick for the Angels. He's a youth. Yes, he is. One two. Lays off. Two balls, two strikes. So far, pretty good at bat. Fought off a tough 0-2 pitch, fouled it off. Took that fastball in off the plate and that hard slider away. Calhoun takes off and Crone goes down swinging for the third out. So we'll head to the bottom of the sixth inning with the Angels on top 2 nothing. Bottom of the sixth inning, we've got a pitching change on the mound for the Angels. Mike Morin taking over for Hector Santiago, who uh, threw the ball exceptionally well tonight. Five innings, three hits, four strikeouts for Hector. Mike Morin has had a pretty nice spring, Gooby, and uh, for him, it's a very lively fastball, terrific changeup. Yeah, in great shape, just like you saw Hector Santiago earlier today. That changeup fastball slider combination has been excellent. A couple of changes for the Angels. Shane Robinson stays in the game. He's in left field. Jeffrey Marte takes over at first base for the Angels. And uh, as we talk about the Angels changes, we can also tell you that uh, we're pleased to be joined by Angels starting pitcher Andrew Heaney who was on the mound last night. And, uh, Andrew, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, just uh, your synopsis on, on your spring. Are you happy with the way things uh, have gone for you, including your last start for the spring training last night? Yeah, it's been great. Uh, each time out, I've felt a lot better. Um, 
I'm ready to go. I'm ready to get this thing going. Yeah, it looks like your, your command and your mechanics have been so smooth. Your fastball in and out, your slider's been good, change up. Got to feel good about that. Yeah, I think uh, I think slider's kind of always the last thing that comes around for me. Uh, I'm still trying to kind of get it exactly where I want it to be. Made a few mistakes yesterday, but, yeah, heater and change up feels really good so far. You know, when you, when you talk about sliders, a lot of times when you're in Arizona, it doesn't feel like you, you feel like you have that feel for that pitch. Do you feel like it, it came along a little bit better last night for you? Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, I just, it's kind of, like I said, it's one of those things that just, um, you know, as you start getting a little bit more of a feel, maybe not even just from from being in Arizona, but just in general, just as the season goes on, uh, you get a better feel for, for different pitches, and that's the one for me that takes a little bit of time. Was it somewhat emotional for you to pitch against your former teammates, the Dodgers, last night? <laughs> I faced them a lot, <laughs> even in just, I mean, obviously since being traded, whatever, I faced them like four different times. So it just feels like even though we're in different leagues, I'm always playing against them. But it's weird. <laughs> so that, that long time you were with the Dodgers, it wasn't, you know, too uh, difficult to take the mound there last night then? No, just tip of the cap. Everybody gave me a standing ovation. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> I want to go back to uh, last year for you, your first with the Angels. And, uh, how pleased were you making that transition uh, from the National League to, to the American League and kind of settling in to, to the rotation for the Angels? I love it because I don't have to hit. <laughs> uh, no, it was great. I think, uh, you know, I've been given a really good opportunity here to, to come out and uh, just kind of, you know, try and prove myself. And it, it took me a little bit last year, and this year I feel like I came in with a good mentality and uh, had a good spring. and. Hopefully that continues. Yeah, take us back to last year in spring training. You had some command issues, and all of a sudden you looked at some video of yourself back in the day, and all of a sudden you figured it out what you did, what you were doing right or wrong mechanically. Yeah, it's just uh, so far across my body. Is, it was a weird thing. It just, you know, I didn't feel right. But whenever I'm on the mound and I'm, you know, trying not to think about mechanical things, you know, I feel like I'm throwing how I normally do, and then I go watch video, and it's just like, vastly different and uh, so you know I went in there and talked with Butch and a couple of the other guys and kind of got uh, a few things settled and then you know from there I was trying to get back to what I was doing which isn't as easy as it always sounds you get into a, a rhythm and a into some bad habits it's hard to break sometimes yeah Andrew early on in camp a lot of guys you know some guys were hurt but now all of a sudden now the rotation seems to be getting healthier what do you feel as far as this rotation now setting up for the season for the Angels I, I think we're in a good spot. I mean, obviously injuries are never, uh, you know, never a fun thing to deal with, and it, it kind of limits, you know, some of the, some of the depth that we have and everything. But you know, I think we got some guys, you know, pitching really well at the right time. Obviously, Garrett stone the ball really well. Hector threw the ball outstanding tonight. Uh, I feel like I'm in a good rhythm. You know, we got Skaggs coming back soon. Hopefully, we can get healthy. Uh, you know, and then we got Trope and Shoemaker. So I feel like with all the with all the pitching we have, you know, we're going to be in good shape. Andrew, as always, we appreciate it, man, and uh, looking forward to the regular season, having you on the bump. Yep, thank you, guys. Thank you, Andrew. Andrew Heaney, kind enough to join us, and you just saw the arm of Andrelton wow. Simmons, by the way, too. Headed in seventh, Halo's on top.
Robin set to lead things off for the Angels. And uh, what we're talking oh. about is defense and arm. Here you go. Angel fans, take this, take a look at that range in that arm. A perfect throw at about 95 miles an hour across the diamond into the outfield grass, able to set himself, and then a perfect throw. Really important considering he had some arm issues throughout camp. Mike Morin loves that. We talked about it a lot. That left side of the infield, the athleticism you're seeing on display once again. Anything hit on the ground has got a good chance of being caught between Escobar and Simmons. Takes the first pitch strike. Simmons 0 for 2 with a couple of ground outs tonight. He's facing Jimmy Garcia, who came in and struck out Crone to finish off the sixth inning. Simmons, Soto, and then Ortega for the Halos here in the seventh. Pops up the bump behind the plate. And it goes foul. And it's one at two. Appreciate uh, Andrew Heaney jumping on and shooting the breeze with us. Pitchers have been pretty good so far. Yes. They come on the headset. It's a one, two, three inning. Yes, that's important. They know the importance of a one, two, three inning. Any chance of getting an interview every inning? Yes. I think we should try that. Yeah. A little flare out towards shallow right, and Hernandez cannot come up with it. I'm not sure he needed to go into a slide. I thought he was going to catch the ball in the air. Looked like he had a shot at it. Catcher number 18, Giovanni Soto. It mean, looked like if he stays yeah. on his feet, he's got a better chance. When you slide like that, your head moves and your eyes move. It's very difficult to keep that baseball in the glove. Here's Soto. One for two with a single and a run scored. Mike Sosha has been very comfortable putting a hit and run on with Soto at the plate. Handles the bat well. Simmons wanted to be on the move over at first base. Just couldn't get a read. Halo scoring twice in the third inning. Soto and Ortega opened up the frame with singles. Escobar brought one of the runs in. G Man Choi got the start in left field. With an RBI ground out. Certainly a great count now to do some action here. 2 1 count. We're going back to Mike Moore, and he has thrown the ball exceptionally well this entire spring training. Another real good inning for Mike Moore. Two on count, hit and run is on, and this one jam shot over to Gonzalez. See him coming. He's out number one, Simmons ends up at second. Real nice job by Soto, even getting that ball on the ground. That fastball ran inside on him. Good jump by Let's Simmons. Fastball on. in is trying to Let hit the ball on the ground. Take well it. done by Soto. And high fives once you get back to that dugout. Job well done. And with Gonzalez at first base, as a base runner, you never assume that he's not going to go to second base on a play like that. Yep. You got to keep running. Exactly. He's, he's got really good hands, and the transfer is unbelievable in his throws to second. That's why he's won four gold gloves. Rafael Ortega, one for two, a single and a run scored. Starting nine tonight out of center field, Mike Trout here today, but uh, not in the lineup. 
more than likely we'll see him tomorrow night. Two balls, no strikes. Potentially getting a bat or two on Sunday also. Handles with two runs on five hits. They've stranded three. Dodgers with no runs, three hits. They've stranded one. Big at bats for Ortega as he's trying to get the 25 man roster. He's only done some nice things in camp. Batting average well over 300. Moving a base hit tonight. Full count, Johnny Giovatella, the man on deck. Some bullpen arms last night. But very deliberate. Jimmy. Deliberate tonight. Took a lot of time in between pitches. Something you should always try to avoid. The pace of play for your defenders behind you. The quicker you work, the more th strikes you throw, the better plays are made behind you. And he walked him. So two on with one out. Johnny coming up. Take a baseman number 12, Johnny Giovatella. Chris Hatcher pitched last night, running the bullpen for the Dodgers. Dodgers have Joe Smith loosening. Giovatella tonight with a strikeout and a single. So he's one for two. One and oh. Nine games for Garcia this spring. No record at 3 2 4 ERA. In the third innings. The walk of Ortega is just the second one that he's issued this spring. Simmons in scoring position. Was credited with a single on that bloop that Hernandez could not catch. There's Hatcher. Chris had his issues last night. Command wise. He threw quite a few pitches. 23 last night. Ground ball to the right side. That'll sneak through for a base hit. 
Simmons will be waved around. The throw from Puig is up the line. Three nothing Angels. No hesitation by Ron Renicky to send Simmons home, even with that great arm that Puig has. You see that quite a bit. Aggressive, trying to score runs. Ron Renicky, one of the best you're going to see as a third base coach. And a good piece of hit by Johnny Giovatello went with that fastball away. Base hit in the right field. And Puig charged that well. Throw just a little bit up the third base line. But Simmons scores easily. There you see Ron Renicky sending home Simmons. Be in a position right there for Ortega as he gets towards third base. A pitching change here in the seventh for the Dodgers. The Angels leading at 3 nothing. Seventh, Dave Roberts goes to the bullpen and brings in Chris Hatcher to uh, clean up Jimmy Garcia's mess. And Hatcher will inherit runners at first and third with one out. 49 games last year, 3-6-9 ERA. Mentioned that he uh, pitched last night, went two-thirds of an inning, gave up a run on a hit and one strikeout and one walk. 23 total pitches thrown last night. Natural face, Junel Escobar. Angel third baseman is one for three. Now RBI single in the third. Four twenty-nine batting average spring training. Everything hit hard. Adrian Gonzalez looks really thrilled to be just waiting out there for someone to throw a ball. Body language is great, isn't it? Down low. One ball, no strikes. Uh, he's probably thinking, I don't think they're going to try a double steal there on that one. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, especially with the way Escobar has swung the bat in spring, I think you just got to worry about him, especially hitting the first pitch. was charging as if maybe uh, the Angels were going to safety squeeze or something. Escobar takes up. And it's two balls and no strikes. Must have heard our conversations about all the hitting and running and bunting. But in this spot right here, you're letting him swing.
Three and oh. So Hatcher's come in and delivered three wide ones. Shane Robinson is on deck. Strike. Both these base runners responsible responsibility is uh, giving Garcia to the tele takes off and Escobar it's a big hack and fouls it back full count get that high fastball to do some damage that fell this straight back. AJ Ellis looking into the dugout for the Dodgers just in case. Escobar does not make contact with Gia Patel potentially going where the throw will go to second or will this hold on to the baseball and not throw it. I'll throw him a change up here looks like. Johnny takes off again and Escobar bounces this one through the left side an RBI single Gia Patel keeps on running to third four nothing Angels. We saw it all spring. We're seeing here at Dodger Stadium going. 3 2 count with one out. Trust in that Escobar is going to make contact once again. Does so. It's a base hit. Giovatello keeps going. First to third. Change up. High change up. Stay back on it well, though. Ground ball in between. Short and third for another hit and another RBI for Escobar. Giovatello picks it up. Sees that slow rolling in the outfield. Slides into third base, first to third, accomplished once again. Giavatella over at third base. Gregorio Petit is the base runner at third base. So Petit will take over for Escobar. And this is Shane Robinson. 0 for 1. He pitched hit on the sixth and grounded out. Pickoff attempt. No more third to first moves as of last year. Now they can add the spin move to second. Yeah, that's that'll be next. No balls in a strike. Luis Avilan loosening for the Dodgers. Hatcher already the fourth reliever. At this pace, we'll see six, maybe seven. Push button on the first base side. Gonzalez can't come up with it, but it falls right to Hatcher. Robinson is thrown out, but the Angels get the run, and it's 5 nothing. Well done on the safety squeeze. Also put that ball on the ground. A difficult pitch to bunt. was running in on him. Not a straight suicide squeeze. Is making sure that bunt is down. It looked like Gonzalez thought he might have had a play there, but with Hatcher sliding in front of him, did not feel that cleanly, and Hatcher ends up making the play. And Adrian's still staring at Hatcher. He's the guy who played the play. So we talked about the motion for this offense. We've seen it on display here with three runs scored. Aggressive base running. Jeffrey Marte out for his first plate appearance. Took over defensively for Albert at first base. Albert ended up going 0 for 3 tonight. 
Five nothing Angels here in the seventh with two down. Book closed now on uh, Jimmy Garcia. Three runs charged to him. His two thirds of an inning. It all started on uh, Kike Hernandez not uh, catching a little pop up off the bat of Simmons. Bouncer to Turner. Trouble get the ball out of the glove, but he retires Marte, and the Angels are done here in the seventh. And up before they add three, it's five nothing. Head to the seventh inning stretch. Mind you, you can take part in the Angels 5K and fun run presented by St. Joseph Hoke Health on Saturday, April 9th at Angel Stadium. All participants will receive a commemorative shirt and finisher's medal. Register today at angels.com slash 5K. Oh, the old sleeveless. Yes. They gone. You like the sleeveless? Yeah, they're comfortable. Yes. I'm sleeveless right now. <laughs> in Seattle? Yeah. Straight up tank top. Yeah. Angels logo on it. Joe Smith, 70 games last year, 5-5. Five five. Nice story, by the way. 3.58 ERA and five saves. Comes in to pitch the seventh. It's 2-3 and 4 due up for the Dodgers. Puig, Turner, and Gonzalez. Mike Moore pitched a 1-2-3 sixth inning. Picked up a strikeout. New third baseman for the Angels, Gregorio Petit. Stays in after pinch running for Yanel Escobar. He will be on the hot corner. Good sequence so far for Joe against Puig. Fastball, 87 catching the outside corner, followed up that very good slider he has. One thing he's worked on in spring this year is. Well, he might not throw one here to Puig being a right-handed batter, but he has thrown a, a few more change-ups, especially against left-handed batters. Joe in the year three of his three-year deal. Puig a little dribble foul. The count remains at 0-2.
Ball and two strikes. Nice job Gio Giovanni Soto has done behind the plate tonight also. It's called a good game through at a base runner earlier in the game second inning. They look like that changeup. Full count. Hector Santiago got the start tonight for the Angels. Last spring training, two up, five innings for him. Four strikeouts, three hits, and more with one in it. Payoff again. That's a piece of it. Spoils it. So we'll reset and do it again. Gooby. That's a long at bats. He had a nine pitch at bat against Hector Santiago. Base hit in the first inning. Down he goes for round number one. That's a great slider. Third baseman, number 10, Justin. Oh, Munson's Turner. slider moves, middle part of the plate, then about four or five inches off the outside corner. Turner tonight, 0 for 2 as he drives one out to center. Take us there. Two down. Always love those quick outs. Come out of the bullpen. They are refreshing. First baseman, number 23. Cesar Gonzalez steps in the play. Gonzalez. <laughs> Adrian one for two with a single and a ground up. Pretty good averages right there. 28 home runs, 103 runs batted in over the last 10 years. It's a model of consistency. Do it up. Angels and Dodgers wrap up their spring training freeway series tomorrow night with a 6.05 start at the Big A. Angels live will kick things off at 5.30. 3 0. That was that changeup. Thought at some point during the sequence against Gonzalez he would use that changeup. Four-pitch walk with two outs here in the seventh. Well, Joe will face Carl Crawford now. The fielder number three, Carl Crawford. Set five out of the strike zone for uh, for Joe Crawford one for two of the double Good. One, one. That's better arm slot there for Joe to make sure he was able to get that into the strike zone still with some movement also Back up the middle Simmons is there He'll race the bag Seventh complete here at Dodger Stadium. Halos up five nothing.
Angels will have uh, Calhoun, Crone, and Simmons do up. Joe Smith just giving up a two out walk and nothing more. Reese Avila comes on in relief for the uh, Dodgers. And as you're looking in the dugout for the Angels, you see Daniel Nava. Everyone was wondering if he was going to play tonight, especially with a right handed pitcher on the mound. You see him behind Charles Nagy there. Just a little bit of a knee issue, left knee. Would have been a regular season game. There he is there. Nava will probably be in the lineup. Might see him tomorrow night, possibly in a bat or two on Sunday before the regular season opens up against a tough right handed pitcher and Jake Arietta. Nava's had an unbelievable spring training. Looking forward to see him back out there playing soon. Cole Calhoun 0 for 2. Strike out the ground out, hit by a pitch. See Avilon's numbers 73 games last season combined. With the uh, Braves and the Dodgers. This one pulled to right field, a base hit. Cole is on board with that leadoff single. CJ Crown will step to the play with the man on. Over three tonight. Ground ball to second. Seager, Hernandez. First, another play. Two down. Cliff Pennington's going to pinch seven, hit here seven, for Pennington. Andleton Simmons. Simmons finishes the night going one for three with a run scored. Well, that was so much fun to watch that throw from the outfield grass from Simmons earlier in this game. What a defender. Pennington's had a real good spring himself. 389 batting average. Pennington pops this one up on the right side, slicing toward the seats and out of play. Back to 389 this spring with the Angels to be signed in the offseason. Three doubles, a triple, three runs batted in. Angels closer Houston Street loosening. He'll pitch the bottom of the eighth. Second one this inning. Ellis just is uh, completely botched, but still got the strike call. The umpire just calling what it's supposed to do when it's in the strike zone. Two ball, two strike count. Now a full boat. 
Giovanni Soto on deck. Three two foul off. Mike Sosha flexibility in the infield. Better 31 years of age. Last year with Arizona and Toronto. Yeah, he can play second, short, third. Played a little bit of outfield too. And has pitched. And he works the walk. He's good at bat. Behind in the count early. The one thing is impressive about this lineup. Catcher number 18, spring. Giovanni. Talked Soto. about putting the ball in play. Coming into this game, this 176 strikeouts in over 1,055 at bats. Three strikeouts in this game. Again, another solid job as far as putting the ball in play. Soto, the backstop tonight, one for three with a single and a run scored. Fouled back into Ellis. Culberson, little trouble getting the ball out, and he throws it away. Pennington ends up at third base. Culberson, who took over for Turner, was thinking about going to second base, but get the ball out of the glove. Error charge on the third baseman. Yeah, that's easy to play. It's a much easier to play at second base instead of that long throw across the diamond. On hop. It's away. Keeps the inning alive. So Rafael Ortega, the Angel center fielder tonight, comes up. Fourth plate appearance. One for two with a single, a walk, two runs scored. Ball no strikes. Ray Navarro has come out to the on deck circle. He will pinch it for Johnny G. Mattel. This one out to a shallow right. Slide makes the catch and we'll head to the bottom of the eighth. The Angels up five nothing.
the Angels closer, Houston Street, on the mound. Scheduled to face Ellis and Garcia, then Seeger, depending if, uh, if Roberts changes things up. 62 games a season ago. Five blown saves, not 40 saves. And uh, just continues to, uh, even with uh, the age and the experience and lack of velocity, it uh, throws a lot of strikes, works fairly quickly. Very deceptive. the big outs. Very deceptive delivery. Keeps the ball down. Over 300 career saves now. And a very, very good career. A.J. Ellis lead things on. Houston takes over for Joe Smith, who worked one in it. One strike down, one walk. 315 career saves, third among active pitchers. Francisco Rodriguez now with the Tigers. Ellis tonight 0 for 2, twice is it a fly ball to right. Stays in the game. He's over the shortstop. Ray Navarro enters the game. That's the new second baseman, so he will leave things off tonight. It's a great changeup. Differential. Fastball 87, that changeup 77. That go down the line, go a little quicker, run well past the base. Better fielder number 41. throwing arm. He's had that chance at first. Thompson last side got into the ball game, ended up going 0 for 3. Came to the Dodgers in the offseason, three team deal. Dodgers, White Sox, and Reds. Todd Frazier going to the, uh, the big name in that deal. Going from Cincinnati to Chicago. Would it be fair to say that Todd Frazier at third base for the Chicago White Sox is the first legit third baseman since Joe Creedy? Yeah, exactly. Good right? call, yes. Green was great over at third yeah, base. He was back before his back. Got him. Yeah, he yeah. was a real good player. This one out towards shallow right center field. Long run in for Ortega and it falls in. So back to back singles. Nothing hit hard, but two men are on base to start off this eighth inning. The White Sox fans are going to love Todd Frazier, yeah. though. The energy he brings, the power he brings. More with Brett Laurie. Some power in their lineup. Seager tonight 0 for 2 with a couple of punch outs. Two balls and no strikes.
This one out to center. Make that three consecutive hits. Ellis is going to be waved around. Face Thompson stopped. I thought he was going to go to third base. The Dodgers get on the board. It's five to one Angels. Behind in the count. Goes with the fastball. It's down a little bit further. There's a good chance at a double play ball, but it was elevated enough. Seeger was able to hit that in the center field for an RBI single. Scott Vance like. For one, as that first one misses down and away. You know, an opening day right around the corner. You talk about uh, injuries being huge to anybody, right? It's, uh, and it impacts the season. Arizona Diamondbacks had a huge impact loss today. That one's fouled off. The bat breaks. That's the bat. AJ Pollock fractured his right elbow tonight. He will require surgery. So no timeline. His return. What a special player he is. Yeah. That's a huge loss. Considered what the Diamondbacks have done. The winner into this spring training and how many games and how well they've played in spring. Did he get hit with a pitch or did he run into the wall? I, I trying to figure that out. I'm going to just keep saying what it was. That just happened, obviously, happened to tonight's game. Put another back toward the mound. Street goes to second for one. That's all they're going to get. Thompson ends up at third. First out is recorded, though. For this choice. Second baseman, number 14, Kike Hernandez. Told as a head first slide into home. How many times have we talked about that? Two places you definitely want to try to avoid that head first slide home and first base. Socrates Brito will be their guy now. Instead of AJ Pollock. Let's hope for a speedy recovery. Baseball. Needs those type of players, high energy, good athletic player, young player, ton of talent. Kike Hernandez tonight over three. Slag takes off and throw goes down to second event. Slag on the stolen base. Seemed like Soto had much of a chance on that one. Everybody clap your Seventeen pitches for Houston Street here in the eighth. Dodgers getting on the board. And the Angels maintaining their 5-1 lead. Well, the Dodgers threatening with two on in scoring position. Hernandez pops it up. Jeffrey Marte into foul territory. Two away. Kenley Jansen getting ready for the Dodgers. He'll pitch in the ninth. Back-to-back -back games for him. Third baseman number six, Charlie Culberson. Charlie Culberson coming up.
grade average this spring. The game last night. Good shortstop. One and out. Tops of the base runner at third base, Van Slyke at second. Even up the count, two balls, two strikes. Saw the replay of the aging Pollock slide all play. No collision or anything like that. As a matter of fact, it was as he went in head first, left hand. Across the plate, but it was the right arm. Almost like he was bracing himself to kind of push up to stand up. That's how he fractured that elbow. And that's a huge loss for the Diamondbacks and baseball for hopefully a quick recovery for him. Full count with two outs. Still on the bottom of the eighth. Extend him at this point. So in the bottom of the eighth, with the bases loaded and one run in, so she's going to go to the bullpen, and Camper Drosian will come in. Pitching change. Angels up five to one. Angels Houston Street lifted for camp, but Georgia want to remind you to stay tuned for the SoCal Mazda post game report coming up right after the game. 
Cameron Drozier to pace Rob Segedis. The Drozier this spring has pitched in 10 games. One and one record, a 4.22 ERA. 17 strikeouts and three walks in 10 and two third innings. Trace Thompson standing at third base. Scott Van Slyke at second. Charlie Culbertson, the base runner at first base. All three belonging to Houston Street. Good fastball from Cam, and it's 0 and 1. He's had a pretty good. Consistent velocity on his fastball, 94, 96. Slider has been very solid, also. That was nasty, nasty slider. Second, came over from the Yankees organization in the offseason. Down low. One ball, two strikes. A lot of trust that Cam had in Giovanni Soto to keep that in front of him. That hard slider ahead of the count 0 2 in the dirt, see if he can get a swing and miss. Good job as far as keeping that in front. Glove down, squared his body up very, very well to keep that slider in front of him. The one two. Fastball at 97 misses. Two balls and two strikes. All quiet through seven innings for this Dodgers offense. Threatening here in the eighth. That is ripped out to deep left field. Shane Robinson moving back out of the track makes the catch and the inning comes to an end. We head to the ninth. Finally. Halo's up five to one. Start the ninth. It's five to one Angels. Dodgers bring out their closer, Kenley Jansen. Second straight night to get some work in. For the Dodgers, the Dodgers uh, will play tomorrow night at the big game. They are off on Sunday. They will open their campaign on uh, Monday against the San Diego Padres down at Petco. And the Angels will have two more exhibition games tomorrow and then Sunday afternoon at 12:05 against the Cubs. Fred Navarro will lead things off against Kelly Jansen. As far as I have it, Gregorio Petit to follow, then Shane Robinson.
Triple A last year with the Baltimore Orioles at 261, 89 games. Infield depth for the Angels. Same goes for Gregorio Petit. Been around a while. Home run and eight RBI here in spring. One thing you can certainly say about Billy Epler this offseason when you talk about the 40 man roster and uh, beyond as far as depth is concerned, he addressed it because it was certainly a huge issue for the Saints of Baltimore last year. No question. Forcing Mike Sosha to play a lot of guys pretty much every game of every in every inning of every game too and guys got worn out towards the end and that's one thing we talked about I saw him during the winter was with Mike Sosha having some guys that could fill in and him feeling comfortable and still have a chance that day when you give some of your star players a day off. Guys that have had some big league experience as well. And we've said it a number of times in spring training that the feel around the clubhouse, the dugout, the field, a lot more relaxed. Guys feeling real good about what this team has done and accomplished so far. We're only just a couple days away from opening day. Full count. This one out to a shadow left. This is the man. Makes the catch. Going to catch by Johan. One away. Covered a lot of ground to come yeah. gets that fly ball. The base number 80. Gregorio Petit. Gregorio Petit. First played appearance tonight. Veteran, 31 year old from Venezuela. Took time in the big leagues with Oakland, Houston, and the Yankees. Takes a little bit high. Jose Alvarez loosening now. Two balls and no strikes. Last year, the minor leagues at 236. Yankees organization, a couple of home runs, 15 RBIs. Right-handed batter for a fielder number eight, Shane Robinson against Petit. And it cuts back in against the inside corner. Very difficult pitch to make contact with. You assume out of the hand it looks like it's going to be a ball. And you have to try to fight it off because it's going through the zone and it's still pretty firm. And the late trigger uh, trigger pull there. Thinking that maybe it's off the plate. I'm going to get a ball. All of a sudden, you realize with two strikes, I yeah. better pull the trigger here. Exactly.
Jane Robinson is uh, 0 for 2. He did pick up an RBI in his last at bat. That was the bunt. So he's not fielding cleanly. And at third base. And a good safety squeeze put on. Very productive seventh inning. Aggressive base running. Situational hitting. Two balls and one strike. Down the left field line, and that is foul. Right size, wrong shape, and a long way. An off speed pitch, it just stayed out over the plate. Just hooks it foul. Count up at two balls and two strikes. Pull it down. Not in front of the off speed pitch. Jansen looks like he's making sure he's working in that all speed pitches because when you look, who had his career in a number of pitches thrown mostly all fastballs, whether it's a true fastball or a cut fastball. Called strike three, and we will head to the bottom of the ninth inning with the Angels up five to one. Angels up by the score of five to one, and Jose Alvarez takes over on the mound for the Angels to try to uh, wrap this one up. Make it two in a row against the Dodgers. And, uh, continue this role that uh, the Angels would like to maintain on before kicking off the 2016 season on Monday night against the Chicago Cubs. Alvarez last year, 64 games, four and three record, and a 3.49 ERA. Certainly a guy that's done a nice job for my Socialist Club. Maybe some innings. Quite a few appearances last year. Johan Mieses, the left fielder, will lead things off. First plate appearance for the youngster. 
That's a strike. Alvarez this spring is pitching seven games, 0 and 1 of 368. No balls and two strikes. Ball two strikes. One two pitch. This one's out to right. Not very deep. Cole comes racing in and it's going to fall in for a hit. And it gets by him. The Essers is going to stop right there. Couple of innings of Dodgers have had some well placed little flares in the outfield. Good decision there initially by Cole to not try to dive for that ball too far in front of him, then it kicked away from him. Austin Barnes batting. Barnes, a product of Riverside Poly High School at the Arizona State. Back up the middle, Alvarez has it. Play goes to first. One down. Nice job of fielding his position by Alvarez. Let the runner back to second. Fires over to first for the first out of the inning. Austin Get Barnes' uncle 17. is none other than Mike Gallego. Ellis. A member of the organization. Little known fact. Yes. That's good information. It is almost 10 15. AJ Ellis up. Dallas one for three with a single and a run score. Halos will have Nick Tropiano face the Dodgers tomorrow night. Remember, that's a 6.05 start with Angels Live kicking things off at 5.30. Alex Wood on the mound for the Dodgers. Two balls, one strike. Is on at second base. Ellis played on the fastball. It's two balls and two strikes. Bounce crowd of 39,000. It's a cool night. Looking forward to getting back home tomorrow. Yeah, it's been a while. Ellis goes down swinging. What a nasty pitch down underneath the hands. It's two down. It's a cut fastball. Nasty pitch. 
you even make contact with, that's off your body or pulled foul. Late break two from Alvarez, good pitch. Trace Thompson up. Thompson one for one as he singled in the last inning against Houston Street. We will look at the strike. His brother and the Warriors went down tonight to the Celtics. At home. Home. Winning streak at home for Golden State. Over now. Oh, it too. Boston Celtics. A big Celtics guy, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no no Being, question. You, Philly? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Not so much. Huge fan. 54 straight games at home. Thompson goes down swinging the Angels. Win the second game of the freeway series by the final of 5-1. to one. Another well-pitched game, well-played game by the Angels. When you look back at that seventh inning, the way they manufactured his three runs, solid throughout. Soto, very good behind the plate. Alvarez threw the ball well, but Hector Santiago set the tone with five shutout innings, four strikeouts, no walks. Outstanding effort. The bullpen once again. It's good hitting, good fielding. Simmons, what a play he made at shortstop tonight. It's going to be a lot of fun watching him do that throughout the year. Yeah, this uh, freeway series will continue as we mentioned tomorrow night at 6.05 at the Big A with Nick Tropiano on the mound facing Alex Wood. The Angels uh, a nice job today. They manufactured some runs early and then tacked on some against the uh, Dodgers bullpen to make it a rather easy game. Nice job five to one. Really love the way Hecker threw the baseball. That was the important thing. We talked about setting the tone. He was excellent. Looks in great shape and he is ready to roll this season. Well, Jose Moda went